In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, in this the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, Jesus tells us in the Gospel, when thou art invited to a wedding, sit down in the lowest place, that when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, friend, go up higher. Everyone that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In today's epistle from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, we heard these words. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all paternity in heaven and earth is named. And he also said that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. According to some of the fathers of the church, when St. Paul speaks about the breadth and length and height and depth, he is describing the cross. The cross is like a letter T, the tau, the letter T with another part added on top of it that goes upwards, the part on which was written the inscription, Jesus, the Nazarene King of the Jews, I-N-R-I. So some of the fathers saw in the words of St. Paul a description of the cross. The depth is the part that goes downwards. The length is the long part onto which Christ's body was placed upon, including the torso and the feet. The breadth, the wide part upon which Christ's arms were opened. St. Paul said that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. St. Robert Bellarmine, a doctor of the church, in commentating on these words of St. Paul and in contemplating the cross, he comes to consider certain virtues in contemplating the cross. So, for example, in the breadth, the arms of the cross, as it were, he contemplates charity. In the depth, the part of the cross that goes downwards, which is the part of the cross which is hidden under the ground, going into the ground, he contemplates humility, and he also contemplates other virtues and attributes of God. If you've ever gone to the Holy Land, to the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre, which was built on the site of the tomb of our Lord and Mount Calvary, you notice that where our Lord was crucified and where he died on the cross, the rock into which the cross was placed and raised and elevated has been preserved. The rock, which we can say is connected to the depth of the cross, the rock is still there. And if you want to venerate that place, that exact spot where Christ died, which is practically underneath an altar, you have to go on your knees and bend down low with your head towards the ground to be able to see the hole into which the cross was placed. So if anyone's um, been to um, the Holy Land, you know what I'm talking about. You have to go down low to be able to comprehend the depth. And you can actually put your head right above that spot, that circle, and look down. We have to be in a low place. We have to be humble to understand the depth of love and mercy of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. To know, as St. Paul says, the charity of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled unto the fullness of God. We need this poverty in spirit, the spirit of God. We need to be poor in spirit, which means to not have any pride, to not have the spirit of pride. We need this poverty in spirit to be strengthened, 
this poverty in spirit whereby there is nothing of self. We need to be poor in spirit to enable us to be filled with God, to have nothing of self-love so that we can be filled with the love of God. As St. Paul says, strengthened by his spirit with might unto the inward man. That Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts. To be filled, we need to be like a vessel, an empty vessel. Imagine your heart is like a cup, like a chalice, into which divine grace can be poured like a deep well. If the cup is already filled, the water that God wants to pour into that cup, the cup of your heart, it cannot enter. We need to be empty of self in order to be filled by God. We need to be hollow like a vessel. St. Anthony of Padua, in a homily on the Blessed Virgin Mary, tells us that the Blessed Virgin Mary was a vessel by her humility. And he tells us, I quote, the hollowness of a vessel enables it to receive what is poured into it. And so it stands for humility, which receives the inpouring of grace. A swelling, on the other hand, repels what is poured upon it, end quote. We can stop this swelling and empty the vessel through our tears, tears of repentance, penance, sacrifice. We can empty the vessel through us acknowledging that we are great sinners. To stop this swelling, we have to know our weaknesses and defects. And we must know what we're all capable of. And we must know the truth of who we are. Through knowing and accepting the truth of who we are, through this knowledge of self, we will choose the lowest place. Because that is where we would feel that we belong. We would know that we belong there in the lowest place. Consider St. Mary Magdalene at the feet of Jesus, weeping. She was in the lowest place, but Jesus exalted her. She who went from being one of the lowest women, we could say, went on to become one of the highest and one of the holiest women. Now, one doesn't need to have committed the sins of St. Mary Magdalene to know that we belong in the lowest place. We only need to realize that we are all nothing. This is the truth of who we are. We are nothing. And as St. Paul says, if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Humility is truth. The truth of who we are. It recognizes the truth. The truth about the greatness of God and the nothingness of us creatures. And St. Francis of Assisi, no matter how much he was elevated and enriched by the grace of God, he always considered himself to be the least. And he wanted to be the least, the last, the last of all men, the minor brothers the lesser brothers, friars, minor. He wanted to be buried in the lowest part of Assisi, at the bottom of the hill, which is where all the rich people would throw their rubbish. It was the lowest place, deep in the valley, in the place that smelt of filthy rubbish. That is where he wanted to be buried, because he felt that that was his place. And if you go to Assisi, if you go to the Basilica where the tomb of St. Francis is, the Basilica has three levels. The lowest level is where you'll find the tomb of St. Francis of Assisi 
in a humble column in the lowest place. We could also mention other places in the Holy Land where you have to go down low. So for example, if you want to kiss and venerate the spot where our Lord was born in Bethlehem, you have to go down low. If you want to go into the River Jordan, you have to go down low. If you go to where the Holy House of Nazareth was, where the Annunciation and the Incarnation took place, you have to go down low. You go down some steps. It's down. God has exalted lowliness. Let us go down low within our hearts, within our souls, to rise in the love of God. And through building a strong foundation on humility, we will grow also in faith and in charity. And we will be strengthened by the Spirit of God through being poor in spirit. To be, as St. Paul says, strengthened by his spirit with might unto the inward man. And he also says, so that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts. That being rooted and founded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length, height and depth. To be humble, we need to be united to the cross. To be humble, we need to be able to obey, to forgive, to be meek, to be patient. To be humble, we need to love the cross. In the cross, you will find all the virtues. The cross, which is our salvation. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand that if we are in search of God, and if we want to get closer to God, we will go to the lowest place. It is there, in that low place, that we will be filled with graces. It is there in that low place, which is usually a hidden place, a place that is not desirable, the place of the nobodies and the nothings of this world. It is there that God's place will be made manifest. And it is there in that low place that you will find Our Lady, the humble handmaid of the Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today is the 12th of September. If it didn't fall on a Sunday, it would be the feast of the holy name of Mary. And she will teach us this way of lowliness. And if we consider her magnificat, she is already teaching us her way. When she said, he has looked on the lowliness of his handmaid, she said. He hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. He hath scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble. He who exalts himself shall be humbled and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted, Jesus said. And finally, dear brothers and sisters, to be humble, let us also be grateful. Grateful. Gratitude will keep us in this low place. To give thanks to God for everything we've received, all the many blessings that he gives to us. The more you receive, the more humble you should be. The more you receive, the more you realize the great mercy and love of that benefactor who is God, who has given these gifts to you. In many ways, he has lent them to you and you have to give an account for them at the end of your lives. So humility will keep us also in this low place, will give us this sense of unworthiness. And we would recognize that our place is the lowest place. Dear brothers and sisters, let us call upon the holy name of Mary to give us this grace, to not seek honors, to not want to be exalted or praised or have glory before men,
but to be in that low, humble, hidden place. That is the place of the strong, dear brothers and sisters, by recognizing you are weak, by recognizing how much we depend on God, and together with Our Lady, we can sing 